Welcome home. I'm Greg Hatfield. I'm Mike Cash. And we're Chop Liver today. Chop Liver think. today. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Music Ministry Sunday. It's great that you're here. Glad that you're part of us. Um, some of you are guests here today. Absolutely. I see yeah. a few that I didn't recognize before. Right. So we have a little welcome folder that you just grab and fill in the registration section of that. We would appreciate it very much. And always, if you have any questions about what we do around here, ask a staff member at any time. Amen. Amen. Good to see you. Let's worship God in spirit and in truth. Okay, now you may have noticed that uh, we have our choirs here today, and all the young people are in colored shirts. Can you, you can see that only those in colored shirts are the young at heart. That's, I'm trying to help you out up here, prime timers. Excellent. So with our theme this morning being the, our singing praises to God, uh, our call to worship has that in mind. If you'll turn to the middle section of your bulletin, our call to worship is there at the top. And as you're able, I'll ask you to stand as we prepare for our worship service today. We'll read responsibly. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. These are the hearts and voices God has given us. Let us sing and praise and be joyful together. We come to worship the triune God. We come to sing praises. Let us remain standing as we sing our hymn, Come Christians, Join to Sing. Sing. Excellent. You've got the theme. It's up on the screen. It's also elsewhere. So sing along. It's a great day to just lift up your voices to God in a marvelous way. Good morning. Um, I'm here to introduce the Primetime Singers. Uh, the Primetime Singers are a vital ministry of both the senior adult ministry and the um, music ministry here at Trinity. But we are not made up of just Trinity members and even not made up of just um, a Methodist. So uh, we have about 
10 different churches in the community represented, and we have about five different denominations. So we consider ourselves a community outreach choir. We sing at nursing homes, retirement centers. Well, actually, we sing anywhere that ask us. <laughs> and we're a kind of a repertoire choir. We have one program and we sing it all year. So it's not like we have to learn a new song every week. Um, our music consists of both secular music and sacred music. And it's mostly old favorites. And we do this so that we can bring back pleasant memories through old favorites and familiar music. But on occasion, we do throw in a new song or two. Now this year, our secular songs are the great American folk song medley. How cool is that? Um, we are having trouble with one of those songs. What is it? Which song are we having? If I had a hammer, which is more Danies than my generation, and so we're working on that one. August through May, we practice on the first, second, and third Thursday mornings, and um, that doesn't com the, the Thursdays that don't com um, conflict with prime time. Now, right now, right now, we're looking for a few good men and women that would like to join us. Now, we don't have an age requirement one way or another on this, and we don't check IDs. You just need to be available to practice on Thursday or to sing during the day. Um, we have a lot of fun and fellowship. You don't have to be able to read music. In fact, most, about 50% of our members do not read music. So if you're not working or are retired and like to sing, please come join us. Now, like I said, we sing a wide variety of music. This song we're going to sing this morning, we call our encore song. The only thing is, is whether they want an encore or not, we sing it. <laughs> and, and it is the closest, it is the absolute closest thing to opera that we do sing. Let's see if I can get down from here. Whoa. All right. <laughs> Thank you. 
There's within my heart a melody. Just a quick word about this committed group. Every year I call them the Workhorse Choir. Sunday after Sunday, they are here. Uh, you know, in July we have a few Sundays with eight or 10, but for the most part, they are so committed Sunday after Sunday, and I love them from the bottom of my heart. Just like I could do all the choirs, but they, um, they work hard every Sunday. They're here every Wednesday night. You're going to hear a wonderful video and see one in just a minute that is very inspiring. And um, Dean Hoffman says it really well. This anthem, uh, you'll recognize the tune by the composer Holst. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful melody. And uh, these words are so powerful, especially for great days of praise where we feel like we cannot express the praise that we have. We cannot say it in words how much we love God.
enjoying already the music that this church offers to us. It is a part of the ministry of the church within the walls of the church, but most of the people who have sung so far uh, actually sing outside the walls of the church in the community, and of course, when the blue shirts get up here, they're the ones that go way out into uh, the world, even across the ocean every once in a while. Uh, to sing the praises of God. Because of your generosity, we're able to offer these kinds of ministries, not only in music, but also in the area of discipleship, in the area of evangelism, and so forth. This morning, I have with me Reverend Dr. Prabhu Singh from India. We began to support uh, Dr. Singh about a decade ago, I believe it was, when he came to the States and was taking his doctorate program at Asbury Seminary. And since that time, we have supported he and his family in India as he teaches in the seminaries and does evangelism work throughout the area. Uh, after the worship service, uh, Dr. Singh will be in the chapel. He'll make a presentation, which he does uh, once or twice a year for us. And we're just glad that he is with us again. I hope you'll, if you have an opportunity, to stop by the chapel and to visit with him, ask some questions, and see what's going on. He's going to have our dedication prayer for us and the offering for this morning. And so let me invite the ushers to come forward that we might be generous, that not only will the singing ministries be supported with our uh, gifts, but also our evangelism efforts in India as well. Let us pray together. Let's pray. A loving, gracious God, we want to thank you for this new day and thank you, Lord, for this uh, beautiful place of worship and the opportunity to come together as your people this morning. Even as we offer our praises, our sacrifices of worship to you this morning, now, Lord, we want to offer, Lord, ourselves and the gifts that you have given us, Lord. Even as we give generously, we pray, Lord, that this is a manifestation of a deeper offering we make this morning that we surrender ourselves to you and to your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. To me, it really gave me the base of my faith. It's that extra push that I needed to jumpstart that missing piece in my life. Before Love Unlimited, I didn't really have faith. I didn't really have anything, but it really made me connect with God and it made me realize that this is the missing piece that was missing from my life. I enjoy the fellowship. I enjoy, um, really I enjoy reading music again, the challenge of that, that's, that's fun for me. Um, and the, all the veteran choir members just really make you feel right at home and welcome you in and so it's just fun. Well, I've been here as far as I can remember, ever since Lilith Angels Choir all the way through. Love Unlimited is incredible. Like, you meet so many new people, you get to go experience the world, and all the while you're just greatly improving your passion and your relationship with God. I have been at Trinity since I was a baby. I was practically born in the church and um, I was baptized here. I've done choir ever since I was, I guess four is the earliest age you can do it. My favorite thing about Love Unlimited would probably be the fact that everybody is so close knit and there's so many different groups of people, but it doesn't really matter at Love Unlimited. There's so many different kinds of people with so many different stories. And when you're in the Love Unlimited like choir room practicing or out here, you don't feel like that everybody's from a different school. You feel like everybody's one. When you sing in church, there's, there's a mission to it. There's a, a part of being in the service that uh, appeals to me, being a leader in the service uh, in what way I can. Uh, and so I think that's, that's part of it. And then with a group of other Christians who are uh, around you and you know, you fit into that team or, or that group and, and, and you contribute to worship every Sunday. So it's really a blessing just to be able to, to do it. 
Before I did choir, I really didn't know God as well as I do all these different songs that has God and you praise God in them. And I think it just brings you closer and closer to God once you actually get to know about them in the Bible and songs and everything. Through choir, I have felt closer to God because each year we go and we do different songs. And each song has its own special meaning to me. Jonah and the Whale was my favorite because it was, the song was an actual story. Like it was a complete story. It was just in song. I, w I knew about this story. Like I didn't know very much about it. So singing that song made me learn more about that story. Before LU, I kind of thought that I was in a good place with God and then I hit tour and realized that there was so much more to it than just going to church and just knowing Bible verses, that it was really a deep personal relationship that you needed to strive for. England was like the first time I really went out of the country that I can remember and we were able to meet some kids from the Stowe School and shared to them about Jesus and I didn't realize, you know, in my Christian bubble, that was such a huge eye opener because I didn't realize how many people really don't know who Jesus is at all. I was able to share who Jesus was with this one kid who ended up later giving his life to Christ and that was such a huge thing that I'd never really experienced before and it was just really cool to get the global perspective. After rehearsal, I, I always feel better than I did before rehearsal. And, and, and you know that's gotta be a, a good thing. So even when I get home and I'm tired, I know that uh, you know, I'm just uplifted. It's just something that I need. And if, and if I miss that on a Wednesday night, I know it, I feel it. The more you practice the music, the more we sing the lyrics, the more I listen to it in my car, on my CD, um, it really just gets in you. And on that Sunday morning when we do our performance, I, can, I fight back tears every time because it is so powerful and I can just feel the Holy Spirit moving through me. And um, it's something I'll always remember and I hope that the audience um, uh, experiences that too. You benefit great friendships, great memories. Um, you learn so much about your spiritual life and walk that you would never learn outside of choir. There's so much uh, more blessing to it, uh, you know, that, that comes as a result. And through my years in choir, you know, having kids growing up and all the pressures of time that you have, um, I wouldn't change a thing. I'd always be here on Wednesday nights because I just became part of my life, you know, who, who I've become today. And, uh, you know, so I encourage people, even when you have those time pressures in life, you just got to kind of carve out that time and just make it happen and you'll be blessed. If you're thinking about joining a seasonal choir, first of all, it's not a very long time commitment, so you're not in it for the whole year. And I, I think you would enjoy meeting new people. I've met so many new people through the choir that I would not have probably normally met at the church. And it's just fun. It's, it's a different way of uh, praising the Lord. And I've always enjoyed it. Considering that I started from nothing, I can only go up from here. Uh, I continue to do my daily regiment of prayers. I continue to just write notes as I'm going along in the Bible. To see God work his magic in my life every day, it's truly a blessing to know that I'm loved and it makes me want to pursue it even more. Nice, huh? Very good. Yes. To me, it really gave me the base of my faith. It's that extra push that I needed that not me. <laughs> to jumpstart that missing piece of my okay. life. <laughs> Growing up in the suburb of Louisville, Kentucky, my, my family was a musical family. Uh, it seemed like everybody in the neighborhood played an instrument and would end up at our house and we would sing and, and play together. But it was only until I met Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior the summer before my junior year in high school that music had a purpose to it. 
because at that point when Jesus Christ had forgiven me of all of my sins and allowed me to live this life that I've lived up to this very moment today, music has had an incredible purpose. Now many of those hymns like How Great Thou Art and, and uh, Just As I Am, many times in my own life growing up and learning more about God, I would give my heart over and over again the more I'd find out about myself to, to Jesus. And much of that still happens today. But it's the simple choruses that we're about ready to sing, the ones that we can remember in our heads that mean so, so very much. Father, I adore thee. Worship and praise thee. It's not designated that we do so, but I think in honor that we need to stand and sing this chorus together. Father. New Creation Choir is such an important choir. They're kind of like, if, if your B team's not good, your A team in a few years is going to be in trouble, right? And a lot of times we sound like a B team is not as good. But the B team, everybody, is what it's all about. And these kids are so faithful. Parents, thank you so much for getting them there on Sunday night. I know some of you drive way in from Columbia County and back out. So thank you for your commitment. Uh, I think it makes a difference. I know it makes a difference in their lives. Um, thank you to Lisa for being so faithful to both our youth choirs. This song, A New Alleluia, features all three parts. In this choir we sing baritone, the guys sing that baritone middle note, and then we have two part girls. And uh, so hopefully you're gonna hear all three of those parts, right? Right? Yeah, okay.
see all of you 830 people get the joy of being at our dress rehearsal. <laughs> we get all the bugs out the first time and you're so patient. I want to say a thanks while Michael's getting in place. He's going to lead a praise and worship song. Michael, any time now. Um, go ahead and, and squeeze in between. Yeah. Uh, next service, let's get Michael up there first. Just take a note, everybody. <laughs> And then move the choir, okay. Um, our sound guys show up like the Sunday before when we start rehearsing in the afternoon. They have to get here a couple hours early to set up and do a sound check. And then they're here for the whole rehearsal. Wednesday night, the same thing. Then they have to power everything down. Then this morning, I think they were here about I don't know, 7.15, something like that. And guess what? They don't get paid. They're all volunteers. Let's say a big thank you to the crew. Love Unlimited, you know this, help us. great words. Uh, special thanks. I won't be able to do all this at 11 because time is so short with all the children, but Mark Carpenter up there running the board, thank you so much. I want to thank the LU Praise Band and Michael as well uh, for all the hard work. They give extra time, come early on Sundays, and uh, they're a, a great blessing to us and so much talent so much. We are very blessed. Um, 
This is Love Unlimited's 40th year. The reason I know that is because Love Unlimited started the same year that Star Wars came out. <laughs> 1977. And uh, this is our 40th year, and you're going to be hearing more about that as, as the year goes along. But I've told this group that they are in a great legacy of singers and of Christians. When you start looking at the difference that Love Unlimited members, as they grow up and have their families, uh, so many of them, when I contact them, are going to church, they're involved in their churches, they're involved in making a difference. That's what this is all about. I mean, you heard what Henry said so well. Uh, one of the things Henry said in that um, the video interview that got edited out because of time was that, Henry, if you don't mind me saying this, I'm going to say it anyway. <laughs> It really, it really touched me because he said, if I could tell the people, the kids who've grown up here, how they take it for granted. And I thought that was a powerful statement I needed to hear as well. So it's really easy to take this for granted, the friendships, the way God brings us together in spite of our differences. Um, it's a beautiful thing. Grace Roberts sings this powerful anthem, contemporary anthem. Many of you have heard it on Christian radio. The name of it is Oceans Where Feet May Fail. Whether you're young or old, this message is so powerful. Listen.
To God be the glory. Let's stand and sing together. Congregation may be seated, but the choir members will remain standing. Uh, prime timers, if you'll stand, because this is a part of the dedication for you. I like that uh, Danny takes this Sunday at the beginning of the musical year to dedicate all of his choir members, but also to dedicate our congregation because they're practicing their gift of singing. You're practicing your gift of hearing. Isn't that wonderful? Uh, before I start, I would just want to remind you of the words of St. Augustine, who is the 5th century bishop of North Africa, that those who sing pray twice. Those who sing pray twice. Words through your mouth, and there's something that God has gifted us with that when we sing, there's a second element of praying that goes on. And that's why Danny, every time there's a performance finishing, he points up. It's not to our glory it's to God's glory. So that leads us into our litany. It's in the middle panel of your uh, bulletin in the middle section. And so people, if you will follow along, and then the choir members, you have your uh, little paragraph that you'll recite, and that'll be your sermon for the day. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Are we ready? God of grace and glory, for the abundance of gifts and talents you have showered upon this church and these choirs, we give you thanks and praise. 
for the coming year of ministry through the word and music that will draw us closer to you, we give you thanks and praise for the love and guidance of our choir leaders, accompanists, and helpers. We give you thanks and praise for your call to these choir members and instrumentalists to lead others in worship and song. We give you thanks and praise. Now, choir. Everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And one more time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen.
want to make sure you understand why there's a big gap right in here is because our children's choirs will be here at 11 o'clock. They're still getting their beauty sleep. <laughs> so from the four-year-olds up to the fifth graders will be present with us at the 11 o'clock service. And, uh, you know, it's beautiful music, but, you know, part of the uh, great miracle of this Sunday is the logistics uh, of just moving the parts and pieces. And thanks to Danny and Kathy who make sure that happens. Uh, just before we leave, want to make sure you understand we have coffee in the North Ex for you if you'd like to have a little fellowship time before you leave this morning or head off to your Sunday school class. And remember that uh, Reverend Singh is in the chapel for those who'd like to catch up on his uh, evangelism uh, ministry in India. Also in the insert of your bulletin is a very colorful uh, invitation to come to our fellowship supper on Wednesday night. It's tailgate theme again this year. We did it two years ago and no fights broke out. That was a nice thing. So <laughs> wear your colors and uh, we'll have the fight songs up on the screen. We just have a good time uh, for Wednesday night, but you do have to register for that. We hope you'll come and be a part of it. So our uh, benediction today comes from the 96th Psalm. You'll see some of that uh, on the front of your bulletin, but uh, take that out with, uh, uh, this afternoon and just kind of read through the whole psalm. It's about singing a new song. And so we leave with these words. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord and praise his name. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among all the peoples and nations, all of his marvelous deeds among the people. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and glory are in God's sanctuary. Did we not experience that this morning? Go in peace and may the God of grace be with you all. Amen. Amen.